Hi, I'm Derek B., editor of the Peru Tribune. Uh, back with you today for another edition of Tomorrow's News, our uh, daily video series where we tell you a little bit about what's going to be in the next day's paper. Uh, we've been a little bit sporadic and a little bit low definition this week due to some technical difficulties. Uh, I'm trying to work through those. Uh, in the meantime, this video is uh, going to go up a little bit late. Uh, but it will be there for you guys, and it will be there in high definition. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. Um, this is uh, Sunday, January 12th, so I'll be talking to you about uh, what you can find in print on Monday, January 13th, and what you can find online tonight at perutribune.com. On our lead story, uh, Chad Abshire talked to some uh, local Republican leaders about the uh, HJR 3 proposal uh, before the Indiana General Assembly, uh, better known as the Gay Marriage Act. Uh, that act would uh, <clears throat> clear the way for a vote in November um, by the public on whether an amendment would be added to the Indiana Constitution defining marriage as uh, between one man and one woman. Um, we talked to Bill Friend and Ethan Manning. Uh, Bill Friend is a, uh, a state legislator, and Ethan Manning is the county Republican chair about their feelings on the bill. Uh, their feelings mostly are that it's not a big priority. Uh, they rather see uh, the legislature focus on business and on education. A friend said he has supported the amendment in the past uh, because in his surveys of District 23, which he covers out of Macy, uh, that's what the people want. So hopefully uh, there will be some movement on that on Monday, and uh, we'll know a little bit more about uh, the future of marriage in the state of Indiana. And on our display story, uh, Chad went out Saturday to the Moose Lodge for Blood Drive. Uh, they hosted that on behalf of the American Red Cross. January is uh, a Blood Drive, I believe Blood Drive Awareness Month. Could be getting that wrong. Uh, it's in Chad's story, which I hope you'll have a chance to read. He talked to a lot of folks who are first-time donors and actually became a first-time donor himself. So uh, congratulations uh, on that, Chad. And uh, it's a very good story. I hope you guys will uh, get a chance to take a look at it. Uh, a little bit lower on A1. Um, another story from Chad, who had a busy weekend. Uh, he talked to the Converse Town Council President, Joe Lennon, about uh, a little bit of his experience growing up in the town, going to Oak Hill High. Um, getting a degree from Ball State University and then continuing to live in Converse and work for First Farmers Bank and Trust. Uh, he's a big sports fan and uh, has a family uh, in Converse, so uh, really an interesting feature. Uh, glad to learn a little bit more about the folks who uh, make uh, the towns in our county tick. Uh, finally, um, I had a story on A1 about uh, the con uh, considered Boeing expansion that could have come to Grissom Air Reserve Base. Uh, we found out this weekend uh, through the Seattle Times that's not going to happen. Uh, machinists in Everett, Washington, um, have approved the deal to construct the 777X um, plane over there. Um, might have been some gamesmanship going on with uh, Miami County and other folks getting involved to potentially scare that union uh, into passing a deal so that they'll manufacture the thing uh, in Boeing's preferred location. Nonetheless, um, Jim Tate of the Miami County Economic Development Authority and Miami County Commissioner Larry West said they were glad to see the, uh, the area considered for that project. Uh, which would have been gigantic, uh, 2,400 jobs, $10 billion. And uh, we certainly are happy to see folks uh, consider Miami County seriously for a project of that magnitude as well. Uh, we hope that uh, Jim and the other folks with the EDA can bring more uh, business into the Aeroplex and that more projects uh, of that size will consider Miami County uh, an option. Uh, speaking of business, on our A3 business page, uh, Chad has a story about Beef O'Brady's, which has become a uh, community institution uh, since it was started six years ago by Dave Van Balen and his wife. Uh, we talked to Van Balen about some of the improvements that have come to Beef O'Brady's, and uh, those include a renovation and now offering mixed drinks. Uh, it's really a cool story about how they um, are a community meeting place and have sponsored a lot of uh, local events. So I hope you'll get a chance to look at that and uh, support Dave, who is a great friend of ours, uh, with his business, um, not only at, uh, at Beef O'Brady's, but at Subway, the Roxy, Papa John's, and all across town. Finally, on the sports page, we had three stories. Uh, two from Nick Roby, who went to the Oak Hill Peru basketball doubleheader on Saturday night. Uh, and as well from Justin Shockey over at the Wabash Plain Dealer, uh, who went to the North Manchester, North Miami game. Um, kind of glum news uh, for our local teams this weekend, but uh, they saw some things they could improve on. I hope you'll get a chance to look at the final scores in the paper or online and uh, continue to support those teams as they're trying to uh, rebuild and improve. Um, as always, you can find all of those stories in tomorrow's Print Peru Tribune. You can also find them online tonight at perutribune.com. Uh, you can find links to them on our Facebook and Twitter pages, which are both at Peru Tribune. Uh, you can also find me and all of our reporters on, on Twitter. Until tomorrow, that's tomorrow's news. 
I'm Derek B. Have a great Monday.